Hi, Patriots Kali. Welcome back to Taiji Twin and Kong with me. I'm Stan Rockwell. I want to start off getting our posture, our balance, and our breathing. Maybe some of the most important things that we, we go over here. Remember, you visualize an invisible line of your feet, and everything within that rectangle is uh, your foundation. If your feet are like this, you still have that line around the outsides of your feet and you're centered over that. You're on one foot, the line is around the outside of that foot and you're centered over Stay balanced and we want to stay grounded. So you have your feet about shoulder width apart, as even as you can get them. Remember, if you have issues with ankles, knees, hips, also, shoulders, elbows, you adapt it to yourself. If you need to have your toes out a little bit, that's okay. Never fully compress a joint so you don't bring your arm all the way in. Never fully extend the joint, you don't bring your arm all the way out. Always going to be some bend in the elbow. Always going to be some bend in the knees. Knees are always going to be pointed in the same direction as your toes. And you're going to remember that 70% rule. And only 70% of whatever your capabil capability is at this particular moment and that changes even over the course of the time that we're together so uh, that may be 70 percent right now and in a few minutes that might be 70 percent you just pay attention to your body and you pay attention to how the bottoms of your feet feel as they connect if you're wearing shoes to the inside of your shoes and to the if you're barefoot Inside, I typically do it barefoot if I'm, on, if I'm on carpet. It just makes it a little easier. Outside, I, or on hardwood floors or linoleum floors, I wear very minimalist kind of shoes. But we want to get ourselves nice and grounded. So you sort of tilt to one side or shift from one side to the other. You don't tilt until you middle and get yourself so you feel that you have weight 50 50 left right but also front and back so that if you were to drop a line from the crown of your head down through the perineum it would hit the floor right in the middle of your foundation and that's your central axis you want to be firmly connected to the earth so you can visualize an energetic connection from those Bubbling wells, acupressure points in the center of each forefoot, or you can visualize roots growing from there, or roots growing from the ball of the foot at the base of the big toe, the ball of the foot at the base of the little toe, and the center of the heel just going deeply down into the earth. Once you're grounded to the earth, you ground yourself upwards to the heavens, you use that same crown, the Ba Wei, or crown chakra. An energetic connection pulling you up, a line attached there pulling you up, stretching you upwards and making you taller. Making adjustments to your body, your spine stretches out and the vertebrae stack on top of each other as you're lifted upwards. The tops of your hips become parallel to the floor, the tailbone drops a little bit. Hips move back a little bit so your stomach and your lower back flatten out. Again, if that doesn't feel comfortable, go with whatever feels best for you. Tops of your shoulders are parallel to the floor. Shoulders relax down the center line. As that line pulls you up, the back of your head lifts up. Chin tucks in a little bit and it may even move your head back just a bit. So your head's nice and balanced on your shoulders. If you drop a line from your earlobes, it goes through the center of your shoulders, centers of your hips down to your ankles and your See, you need to have some bend in your knees to be able to do that. Trying to stay in harmony with gravity, if you stand at attention with your shoulders back and your knees locked, it, it shifts you back to your heels, and that's not that's not good. You have to do extra work to stay upright. You also risk um, hyperextending your knees when you do that, and pulling your shoulders back puts more pressure on your chest, which affects your breathing. And we want to have everything relaxed but ready. So focus on your breathing. Inhale through your nose, down to your diaphragm, touching the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth behind your front teeth. 
and as you exhale you pull the pelvic floor up you move as much air out as you can if you want you breathe out through your mouth and release the tongue and you sigh ah with that sound you let whatever tension is inside whatever tightness is inside just relax and flow out and away from you and just breathe at your own pace making the exhale last just a little bit longer and the inhale. You feel any tightness across the top of your head, your forehead, your eyes, your ears, your jaw, around your mouth. Just breathe into those tight spots and let them soften and relax. Down into your neck, your shoulders, down your arms, your wrists, your hands, your fingers, any tightness. Just let it soften. chest, your stomach, your back, any tightness anywhere, just let it soften, and your hips, down your legs, your ankles, your feet, your toes, just let it soften and relax. We're going to start to shift our weight from one side to the other, making sure like if um, that line hanging from the by the way, as a pendulum, it's going from the middle of one foot to the middle of the other foot. It's never going outside. So the movements at the hips and the ankles, keeping the knees nice and soft. And you start to turn a little bit on that central axis. So weight goes into one foot, the heel of the other foot comes just a bit off the ground. Your arms are totally relaxed like your hands are directly attached to your spine. And they start to swing. And just continue to breathe down to your abdomen. When you exhale, you pull the pelvic floor up to move as much air out as you can. And you make the exhale last a little bit longer than the inhale to engage the relaxation response. You can just visualize yourself in a place or with someone or something where you feel very safe and secure and peaceful. And then just to the drumming. And then the back taps just inside the hip on the buttock. The upper hand right now is tapping just inside the shoulder. And then the base of the rib cage. Inguinal crease or the qua. Lower dantian. and just swing. You can do this however long you want when you're just doing it on your own. It's Remember, it's the Taiji swing that they use at Massachusetts General Hospital and at Harvard. It's part of their mind-body program. It's the Taiji where you don't have to remember a sequence, which makes it much or relaxing in a way. It's also used in some Qigong forms. Just come back to center, hold a really big ball, loosen up the lower back a little bit, move the hips out, upper hand keeps the head still. Just come back down. Start shifting again. We'll do a little bit of balance work. All your weight goes into one foot. Either foot, it doesn't matter. The other foot just floats up a little bit. If you need to keep your forefoot on the floor, that's okay. Bring it back down. Shift all your weight into that foot. So the other foot can just float up. Just like you're kind of moving your foot out to see uh, what's in front of you. If you have your arms full of groceries or something, this is a a movement that's used in a sequence of uh, Qigong for Parkinson's to help folks kind of find their way along. They bring their foot completely up off the floor, move it up a little bit, but to practice balance, they keep it up like that. This time we're just going to bring the knee up. If you need to keep your forefoot on the floor, that's okay. We're bringing the knee up 
to bring the foot completely off the floor if you can. If you can't, that's fine. You can just visualize it. Keep one hand on a chair or on a wall, forefoot on the floor. But this is so if you're about to step up over that curb or step up onto a stair, shift your weight over. Heel comes up this time. Heel comes up. Shift your weight over, drop your hand on your thigh. Other side. Walk just, just a little bit. And if you're in a tight space, you can walk in place. It's just bringing your foot up and down. But paying, paying attention to your weight shifts from one side to the other. And again, how the bottoms of your feet feel. Part of balance is uh, being aware of where you are in space and how the bottoms of your feet are connecting to the earth. So shift all your weight into one foot. Feel how that grounds. And the other foot can let go. Go straight ahead like you're walking on railroad tracks. It comes down. It seals to the floor as you shift your center. So when I'm back here, that pendulum is right in the middle of this foot. As I shift my weight forward, it goes zigzag across to the middle of the other foot. When all my weight's in that foot, the foot and back can let go. It comes straight up and down, and you don't have to take very long steps. Again, you stay in your comfort zone. You should be able to smile when you're doing this. And just shift your weight back. Step straight back. If you're like me, you may find it's a little harder to keep your feet, toes pointed straight ahead on this one because when the foot comes down and wants to go into young style walking and go to 45 degrees, and we're going to do young style walking, so just shift your weight over to one side, other foot goes to 45 degrees. Shift your weight over, T-step, foot in the front straight ahead, foot in the back 45 degrees, knees staying beyond your, behind your toes to keep the pressure off your knees. Shift your weight back, foot in front comes toe up. Comes in if you need to do a T-step, you do that. You step out and back, shift your weight back, foot's at 45 degrees, foot in the front. Rotate so the toes are straight ahead. And remember, if you have hip issues, you have to step straight back like that. You rotate on the forefoot because you want to have space between your feet. And what you don't want to do is step straight back and not adjust so you do that. Because if you don't, you eventually cross your feet and you fall down and you don't want to do that come up a little bit sideways walking remember you're tilting from one side to the other we'll add the hands for wave hands like clouds your upper hand comes across palm towards your lower hand palm towards you when you get to the corner upper hand goes palm out drops down as the lower hand comes up and this, this is the young version This is a standing meditation. You can do however long you want. Then you step out about the width of your foot. Follow step. Each foot comes completely off the floor. The toes stay pointed towards the front. If you remember, we use pouring as a metaphor or visualization when we're shifting from side to side. You can use that in this too. All the water's in this foot. Now it's pouring over to the other side. Come back to center. I'm going to work our brains a little bit and see how well we remember sun style. I'm going to see how well I can remember doing it backwards. So, should be able to just mirror me, I hope. Start off toes towards the corner. 
Remember, this is the form that was developed for uh, pain management in particular, but it also is helpful with uh, conditions like COPD and uh, recovering from heart issues. Nice and balanced and begin. And down. Open. Close. And my brain got distracted. It was pouring down rain a moment ago, and now the sun's pouring through the skylight. So, center it and, and go within. We'll start again. Up, down, step, step, open, close, single whip. And the sun version of wave hands, upper hand, palm out, lower hand, palm down. I was trying to start with a second section, which is okay if you want to do that. Sometimes we'll mix these up, or I have mixed these up, again, to help with memory and with brain function. Try doing it backwards, too. That's a good brain work. Open, close, second section, first part, brush knee push to the right. Then a little follow step. Play the lute, step up to parry, and parry, and punch. And again, you can take small steps if you don't have a lot of space. Just going in this direction, I don't have a lot of space, so I take small steps. Open, Close, second part, second section, brush knee. Play the lute, parry, parry, punch. Apparently closing, push the mountain to the front. Open, close, first part of the third section, brush knee. We usually tie a coat. Up and back and push. Open, close. Lateral single whip in the lowering movement. Fist under elbow. Step back. Repulse monkey to the back and to the front. Brush knee. Leisurely tie a coat. Come back to the front for open and close. Second part of the third section, brush knee. Leisurely tie a coat. Up. Back. Push. Open. Close. Lateral single whip in the lowering movement. Fist under elbow. Step back. Repulse monkey to the back. To the front. Brush knee one more time with the leisurely tie coat. Up. Back. Push. Back to the front. Feet back in a V. Open. Close. And down. One other distraction I've got going is right now I'm getting treated for prostate cancer and uh, one of the parts of that is hormone therapy which gives you hot flashes and they're rather frequent and uh, you suddenly break out in a sweat. It uh, takes you away for a moment so I'm doing the best I can. We want to uh, work on the um, young style for a little bit because we've been working on that for a few weeks now and remember don't worry about left and right and there's times I've developed or tried to develop when I was working in a place where it had a mirror in the front like in Patriots Colony where people could stand behind and, and see the uh, hand movements 
So we just do it all facing forward and not even bother with left and right. So let's do it that way. And again, doing it, uh, mirroring it is okay or, or doing it the other way around is okay. I've noticed when this hand goes up, a lot of times the women, that hand will go up because they're actually mirroring me, whereas the guys oftentimes when this hand goes up, this hand will go up because they're turning it around in their head. And so whichever way works best for you, do it that way. Start off evenly balanced, shift your weight into one foot, step up, palms back, arms rise, and down. Remember the first movement after the opening is part the wild horse's mane. It's that grab, foot comes in, step up, hand drops down, hand comes up. You do it three times. Little half step with the back foot, hold the ball, shift your weight back into white crane spreads wings. No weight on this front foot, but the outside of the foot's touching the ground. Turn on that center axis, palm comes around so it lines up with your forehead and you turn on that center axis as you come back to the other side. Like you're gonna toss something. If you need to rebalance with a T-step, you do that. Step up, shift your weight. Push. Do this three times. Then there's a little half step of the back foot. Hands push over to the side. Heel of the foot in front comes up and then the toes of the foot in front come up. And that's playing the lute and then repulsing the monkey young style four times. One two, three, four, into grasp the bird's tail left side, ward off, roll back, press, push, and if we were doing this in a standard way we'd have to make a 180 degree turn but we're just going to come back to the center and do grasp the bird's tail on the other side, ward off, Roll back, press, push, and we do another 180 degree turn, but we're just going to come back centered, push off to one side and bring the toes up on that side so it can take that foot out to 45 degrees, shift your weight over, do that hook hand where you bring all your fingertips together, a little bit of bend in the elbow, arms back a little bit, the other hand is in front of your shoulder comes around, goes palm out, and you shift your weight. And you're looking through index finger and thumb, which is uh, mouth of the tiger, side view, like that, like that, and from the back. So you're in a bow stance, and you'll see this taught uh, different ways too. I'll, I'll show you from the side. We'll have you come around, sweep back, and if you have the Paul Lamb or the um, David Dorian Ross video, they basically kind of swing around like that and have the momentum taken around. Teachers I had with more traditional kind of young style, you came around, you rooted that foot, bring the hand up, and then you shift your weight because they felt you were using the muscle in your back leg and that was more powerful. So. Um, Whichever way feels best for you, just bring your feet shoulder width, push across and adjust that foot to 45, hand comes over in front of the shoulder, lining up the Laogong point with the acupressure point in your shoulder, bring it back to the center, turn the hand, shift your weight. Like that. And this is where you would do another turn, but we're just going to come back because the next movement is wave hands like clouds. Let's see if we can figure out a transition for that. Come back and wave hands. We're going to take really small steps. 
and then you go into another single whip. It actually felt pretty good. So we're at the end of Grass a Bird's Tail. Come back. Push. Come back. Wave hands. Play with that and, and um, find what works best for you. Remember you're playing jazz, you're staying inside the principles. So you want to keep your body centered over your foundation. Um, make your movements as graceful as you can. But you don't want to be swaying all around like that. So it'd be more of a kind of a slow shift into it. Push. Come back. Wave hands. When you learn the movements individually like this, when it comes to putting them all together, you're way ahead of the game anyway. Go into another single whip, adjust that foot, come over, hook in, push. And looks like that. So you're bringing your fingertips together, um, acupressure points. It's a chin nam move where you grab and you lock a joint. It's sometimes used as a fist as well. We'll go over that more next time and, and add a move on to it. Just uh, come back to center, come up on your toes, tense everything up as you inhale, exhale, just let everything flow out. All the tension flows out. Inhale, exhale, one more. Loosen up your legs a little bit. Inhale up, exhale down, balance everything out. Just going to do three. Thanks for joining me. Stay safe, healthy, and well. Catch you next time, and we'll progress on with um, Young Style. We'll go right into Young Style. So practice Sun Style on your own, and remember it's nice to learn more than one family. Um, actually, you learned a little bit of a chin style today when you go like this the next movement in chin style would be like that golden guard stamping foot it's one of the uh, opening moves in chin style but it's also used in um, a form called taiji for energy and uh, a moderate moderate version of it in taiji for rehabilitation but those are a couple of other paul lamb forms. So take care and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.